Ever since I can remember, I've been popping my collar. <clears throat> hmm. I'm telling your followers. Otheta, hello. Hey, Ma. What's up, Mom? Big L is in the house. Hello, everybody. Dodo, what's up? Hi. Shout out to Mom Dukes. T Black, what's up? How's everybody doing? Can you hear me well? What's everybody doing right now? Tell me what you're doing right now. Like right this second, what are you doing? Cody, what's up? Brian, hello. Fabi, what's good? Couple hustles, hello. We got a lot of East Sellers RI members in here. I love that shit. I love it. It's so exciting to watch people take initiative to building their future. That is that gets me excited on any day of the week, any hour of the day. That is something I can get with. Oh, he's in Foxwood Casino, bro. Throw 50 on... Well, this is what I would do if I was at Foxwood Casino. I'd be playing the inside on the roulette. I'd play a little blackjack too, but I'd be playing the inside on the roulette table. I'm going heavy on them numbers. Heavy on them numbers. I'd be playing zero, double zero, 23, 11. Going heavy on them numbers. Eating spicy deluxe. What's everybody else doing? Let me know what you're doing right now. I want to know what you're doing. You always see what I'm doing. What are you doing right now? Raphael just had a question. That's a good question. How did you start Amazon Lit? So seven years ago, um, I actually didn't start the business. Sebastian, my business partner, started the business. Um, seven years ago, Sebastian started going to Sam's Club and Costco because his aunt's friend was selling on Amazon and they were making a little bit of money. They since stopped. This was seven years ago, but they since stopped and they told him that they were going to Sam's Club and Costco and BJ's and buying products and selling online. And that's how it all started, out of a basement. Sorry. How to keep doing good in Q4. So here's a little tip for y'all. Listen, I'm not Nostradamus or anything, but I'm sure I'm definitely far from it. You know, I'm sure that everybody just heard that the buy box issue is not a glitch. And like I've been saying, it's not a glitch for three weeks now. You know, it's no surprise to me that it's not a glitch. So like if I say something, now obviously I'm not perfect. So there's, yeah, I could be wrong. But most of the time, 99% of the time, if I say something and it's in reference to what what's happening with Amazon, most of the time it's correct. So, Andres, what I would do to keep doing well in Q4 is send as much inventory to Amazon as possible. I'm talking as much inventory as possible. The way we make a shit ton of money in Q4 is selling as much inventory as we can produce. So if you can produce a thousand orders a week, like produce, I mean like package, ship to Amazon, whether it's by yourself or you got one or two employees or you got 10 employees, so regardless. You need to produce as much inventory as possible and get it off to Amazon and then you will be able to make a shit ton of money. So like, when we see our highest sales days, right now these past two days, they've been we didn't break 100K, which is odd to me because the previous three weeks before that we were 110, 115. Um, I don't even think we just broke 90K these past two days, which is very odd. But I know from experience that we have the best sales days when we have the most inventory in stock. So like right now we have about 200,000 units in stock. So like the, that's why we've been crushing it lately because we have the most orders in stock. So I suggest you, you do the same. Rabaiish. Who's a new follower, I believe. Welcome, Rabaiish. And if I'm incorrect, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure I just saw, maybe just a couple days ago. So thank you for joining us on this journey. We're excited to have you here. Everybody say hello to Rabaiish. We're excited to have her in the community. 
Um, she's literally taking clearance tags off of stuff to sell on eBay. That's the hustle right there. I love that shit. Keep getting it, girl. Keep crushing them sales. Homeboy RTS Scott is eating a spicy deluxe. Listen, if you're just joining us right now, like, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? You, I always show you what I'm doing. What are you doing right now? I just seen Amazon 8-figure seller join. I could guess what he's doing. Um, I know he's got a couple little kids. He's probably chilling at the house. They might be in bed by now. I don't know. I don't know. Kobe changed up the whole flow at the house, I'm sure. But, like, what are you doing right now? You know, what's everybody doing right now? What is the best product to start off selling with Amazon FBA? So, the best product, this is a game changer right now. So, screen record this, do whatever you got to do. The best product to sell on Amazon or products to sell on Amazon are the ones you're making money on. Those are the best products. Don't limit yourself to categories. Don't limit yourself to niches. Now, obviously, if you can make a lot of money in certain categories and certain niches based on private or uh, based on prior experience, then absolutely sell those products. But the way I see it, I want to sell anything I can make a couple bucks on. If I can make two dollars or more on it, sign me up. I want to sell it. I want to sell it, especially if it's moving 100, 200 units a day. Um, but also you need to keep in mind if you're just getting started you need to find products that you're not gated in or restricted in to sell on Amazon and it's very simple to do that you go to your seller central you click on the top left it says add a product I don't know am I reversed is this this is my top left but are you seeing me like this is this this is probably your right I don't know it doesn't matter but you're gonna click add a product you're gonna paste the ASIN in follow the prompts I usually like to put as a test I'll put the ASIN as the merchant SKU with the word test after it follow the prompts and see if there's or no you wouldn't even be able to get to create a listing if you're gated it wouldn't even let you get that far so just put the ASIN in select sell this product and then it will pop up and it'll let you know if you need approval or you need invoicing whatever you need oh I'm a Brian bro your beautiful cream I play those bot I pay that I play that bottom right square heavy what is it 32 33 35 36 I play that bottom right square heavy you know what gets me though man what gets me when I'm at the casino and they sometimes they have those roulette boards that are reversed so like the like normally it starts at one on the left but now it starts one on the right and just by just you know patterns in my brain I go to put them in the spots without looking at the numbers and then like let's say I play 31 32 34 35 when really I want to play 32, 33, 35, 36, and then I put, you know, $15, $20 on each number, and then 36 comes out, and I realize I'm on the fucking backwards board. That shit pisses me off. Grinding, Braveheart Liquidators, nice. Ethan Claire, faster to have two people prepping separate products, or those two people working on the same product? Uh, those two people working on the same product definitely Catherine hello Emerald Avenue shop welcome um, so an optimized station should have three to four people on it now obviously if you only have two employees then you could have two employees but one person should be um, unboxing the products the other person should be packaging the products the other person should be putting those products or labeling those products and the, th the fourth person should be um, assisting essentially a runner right helping out unpacking the boxes then going back putting the finished units back in the case taping it putting it on the pallet so it's like a system no way amazon on gated services watching my youtube videos that's fucking cool i can get with that which one are you watching right now i know what the community's favorite is but not necessarily it has the most views um Honestly, let, let me know if anybody else agrees, but I think we're a super underrated YouTube channel. And if you got any suggestions for topics that you'd like to see a YouTube video about, let me know. But well, I'm listen, I think we're a super underrated YouTube channel. I'm not always right, but I'm always right, Noah. Resale with Delgado, what's up? Alaya, hello, Gabriel. DB Hot, what's up? 
FBA or FBM. It depends. I'm, I'm, I prefer FBA, but if I gotta switch it over to FBM and crush it, like for example, we got this order the other day. Um, it was from like a, we place orders with stores sometimes, you know, we, we build relationships with stores. So we placed, it was like a $400,000 order. It came in three or four different shipments. Um, and, and we got a product in and I forgot why we decided, oh, it was a hazmat. It was a hazmat, but we didn't want to wait because usually hazmat pallets we put in once a week and then we schedule it to go to Amazon and it takes a little while to get there because we use a third party carrier. So it takes three to five days to get there and then Amazon got to check it in. So instead of doing that, we listed at FBM and today we sold 60 of the 300 units we got in one day. You know, and I know on that product we're making four fifty five dollars every time we sell, sell it. So figure sixty times five bucks, that's three hundred dollars in gross profits today off that one FBM product. If you could do that three hundred sixty five days a year, what is that? Three hundred Oh, why is my brain shitting on me? Three hundred times three sixty five? Was that ninety thousand dollars? Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's right. It's ninety thousand dollars in gross profits. Yeah, so there is some opportunity buys we do in Q4, and this is a gem. Let me just see who's in here. I can't be giving this gem to just anybody. Oh, Holman, my man Holman. Abbas, what's up, my friend? Cody, hello. Oh, we got some OGs in the house. That's what's up. I had a nice dinner in Anaheim um, with, with Abbas and his wife. They're lovely people. They're crushing it, too. They're crushing it, too. Um, so, yeah, opportunity buys. You should be purchasing Halloween candy and Halloween costumes or Halloween decorations. You should be purchasing them, I would say, August. August, if not already. Uh, I know we already have Halloween orders placed, so you should be placing them and looking at them. And then same with Christmas stuff. We place Christmas orders... You know, Christmas product orders, we place them four or five months in advance. So you should be reaching out to your current distributors and asking them, hey, do you have your, your you know, winter holiday, your fall holiday catalogs out? Because there's certain products that people love around Easter. I mean, around fucking Easter. Like, a, like a whole year ahead. Around, like, Thanksgiving. You know, like, what sells huge in Thanksgiving? Fucking canned cranberry sauce. Like, what? People want that cranberry sauce. They want to put it on that turkey. They want it on the mashed potatoes. They want it everywhere. So, like, that's an opportunity buy. Halloween candy, opportunity buy. Those fucking stickers you put on windows when it's, when it's Halloween, opportunity buy. Uh, Christmas, Christmas gifts. You know, Christmas is going to be huge this year for Amazon. It's going to be literally, Amazon's going to have a whole going to be crazy especially if this COVID thing keeps up it's going to be wild like straight wild all right couple hustles could FBA and FBM share the buy box yes obviously not at the same time only one person could be in the buy box but absolutely FBA and FBM could share the buy box 100 percent especially now with these COVID restrictions T Black what's up how you liking the uh how you liking the content in the course Uh, Aaliyah said, do you market your private label products on social media or just PPC? Um, so we personally don't do any social media links, but I know Amazon loves social media advertising because what you're doing when you advertise using social media is you're taking a customer who's not shopping on Amazon, whether they have an account, a private account, or they do not, at that moment they're not shopping on Amazon. And what your social media link does is brings them to Amazon. And Amazon loves that shit. That's driving traffic to their website from people who would not be shopping on their website. So Amazon loves social media links. And we go deep. Listen, I know a lot of you in here are already enrolled in these sellers RI. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about it the whole live. We've been talking about it a lot lately. Most of you know it exists, but it closes tonight, right? Like life-changing opportunity, it, it closes tonight. We're not going to open up 
until we're finished with this group of people and, and we're, we're able to guide them through um, growing and scaling successful Amazon businesses. Um, Melanie Wainu said, I want to liquidate a product. Please, how can I tell Amazon to help me put it on daily deals? Um, so daily deals is actually a promotion. So you'd select on advertising tab and you would select the promotion. I think it's, uh, I could actually look it up for you. I'm sitting in front of my computer. I don't want to be selfish, you know, just throw you for a loop. But let me look it up for you. So yeah, it would be advertising and then deals. Couldn't be more simple. And then you create a new deal and you provide a discount. Eating pizza, what's everybody else doing right now? I wanna know what you're doing right now, like this second. I don't care what it is, tell me. If anybody wants to join this live as well, you're more than like a, um, welcome to, you scroll all the way up to the top of the comments and you select request, request to be in the live or you exit and come back in and then it will say request to be in the live. Ethan's Claire, I have two employees. Faster to have them prep the same product or do their own at their own station. We find it faster to have people work on the same product. Absolutely, we find that faster, but you can test. Dep depends on how your, your production stations are set up. You know, how well you're organized. You know, what kind of systems you're using to bag products, poly bag products, tape products. You know, what kind of system you're using to print labels. Um, how you're organizing your workflow of your production stations. Where's the product coming from? Is it coming from the same end of the table that it's being removed from? Because that's not productive. So there, it depends. There's, there's, there's certain aspects to, to running a successful production line. So it really depends on your setup. But definitely, I, I prefer to have multiple people at one station. Chirag Patel, 7119 said, Eric, what if you find a really good product and then you see on Keepa that Amazon hasn't been selling for three months? Would you sell that product? Um, you got to go deeper than that, my friend. So at the price Amazon was selling at, would you be making money or would you be breaking even? Um, or would you be losing your shirt, right? I take all that into consideration because if I'm buying a product and Amazon was on it three months ago, I want to make sure that if they come back in, I'm not losing $10 every time I sell it. I don't mind losing a dollar or two, maybe even $3 for the possible reward of making thousands, right? If it's moving well, Amazon's not on it. Even if you can get two weeks out of sales on it and Amazon comes in for the last three days and you gotta drop your price and lose a little money, what people don't understand about selling on Amazon is you can't look at your profits for the day for a specific product because let's just say for example I'm selling calculators right this calculator today I made a hundred dollars on it yesterday I made a hundred for the past seven days selling this this uh, TI 30x 2s calculator I made a hundred dollars a day on it right so I sold let's just say I sell a hundred units a day at a dollar a profit right so I'm making $700 in the past week on this. And now, all of a sudden, I have 200 units left. And now I have to drop the price in order to move it because it's not selling. It's been in stock for two weeks. It's not moving. I have to drop the price and lose a dollar on it in order to make my money, right? Or to get anything out of it in order to move this inventory. So what we will do is I'll lose the dollar on the last 200 units because that means the total purchase of this calculator still made us the $700 in profit minus the $200 that we had to lose to drop the price so we still made $500 off these calculators. That's the shit I'm talking about. Uh, too many people don't look at Amazon like that. They're too focused on the right now. The Money Badgers listing 700 books. Um, what do you mean, Andres? Is there any software for daily sales? Yitzy, fucking Yitzy, man, you're killing me, bro. Killing me. Listen, 
I've been telling you the solution. I've been saying it for days, my friend. And and listen, I love you, man. I never met you before in person. I'd love to meet you in person one day. Maybe I have. Maybe we've crossed paths. But I've been telling you, man, send more inventory in. Go wider on your SKU count and your business will grow. Also, run advertising on the products that are moving. I've been saying this for three weeks. Christian Domingo said, let's see what we got in here. Listen, if anybody wants to join this live as well and kick the shit for a couple minutes, you just let me know. You just slide me a request, I'll smash that request button, and boom, bickety-bam, here we are, talking. Doesn't matter what country you're in, we're talking. The blessings of Instagram. So Christian Domingo, Dot Domingo said, If you had to start all over again selling e-commerce, how would you go about it? I would do exactly the same thing we did. You know, because, like, it worked. You know, I'd bust my fucking ass, like I continue to bust my ass. Uh, I'd sell a lot of inventory. Even if I'm in the early on, I didn't. We didn't care if we were making a dollar fifty profit, you know. And, and if you're just starting, it's okay that you only might make a dollar fifty on you know fifty sales that you sold, um, because it's still seventy five dollars in profit, and you're moving inventory, you're growing your Amazon account. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. They have these super high prerequisites. Like I need to be making at least five dollars on a product. Okay, that's cool. You're not going to sell a lot of inventory. Yeah, your profit margin will be high, but I rather operate on any day of the week. On any day of the week, I rather operate a business that's at a, let's say, 17% profit margin, doing a million dollars, or let's keep it lower, right? Doing a hundred thousand dollars a month in sales at a 17% profit margin, than operate a business that's doing thirty thousand a month in sales at a 35, 40% profit margin. You know, or maybe 40 might be too high. You know, 40 would be 15,000. Yeah, so even even if I'm doing, th if you're doing $30,000 in sales at a 40% profit margin, or even say a 50% profit margin, your your gross profit is $15,000. But if you're doing $100,000 in sales at 17%, yeah, you're working harder, but your gross profit's 17,000. So you're actually making more money. I'd rather always sell more at a lower margin, and the, that is what wholesale is. That is what a wholesale Amazon business is, is selling lots of inventory. I think people get too caught up on the, on the profits, the profits. That's a great question, Noshin Kawaja. What's the benefit of using 2D barcodes on FBA shipment? From my understanding, you have to have FBA label along with 2D barcode. Just trying to understand how we could be beneficial. Um, so having 2D barcodes is not a requirement. You do not. It's that's you. You have to have a shipping label. That is a requirement. 2D barcodes will speed up the receiving time of your of your inventory. And this is something we go deep into in eSellers RI talk about I'm talking like max out your production and get your products received way faster Steve what's up my friend yeah Mel Mel Daz absolutely Mel absolutely the course is good for new Amazon sellers and if anybody's here who's in the any e sellers are I and and they can and they're new and you want to chime in the way we've designed the course it's i think it's brilliant right and it didn't happen overnight it's taken almost two years to design it but it's like it's from start to finish right and we and we give we give modules out you know every week because we know that people could get overwhelmed and like obviously if you're if you're a seasoned seller you could skip the first module or two modules because it's about creating an amazon account but we wanted to include it for people like you and then it goes into finding suppliers and researching products and software we use and building relationships and then shipping the products and fees and then we go into seller so it's just crazy mel so absolutely it's for you t black has a question 
about how to organize your week when you're only one person doing it all. I'm getting worn out. So that's a great question, T Black. Great question. Great question. So if I was you, and I've been you before, we've been a one man show, two man show early on, or woman show in your case, um, your primary focus should be product research because it doesn't matter how busy your week is in terms of Amazon if you're not purchasing inventory. You could be doing a million fucking things, but if you're not purchasing inventory to start selling those products, then it's it's wasted time. Not wasted time, but it's just not time used wisely. So a majority of your week should be spent purchasing products and the only time or researching products to purchase and adding them to a purchase order, the only time you should stop researching products is to package those products. So let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you do product research, you submit an order on Wednesday, Thursday you do product research, the order gets shipped to you Friday, you spend the entire day packaging it, labeling it, boxing it, shipping it to Amazon, let's say that takes six to eight hours, I don't know how many orders units you ordered, but let's just say it takes six to eight hours, you do that on Friday, and then Saturday is back to product research, Sunday, if you could spend an hour or two, that's great too. If you want to spend the time with your family, that's cool as well. Um, we work with like big box stores, Caleb. Like not, we're not doing no. We don't work with like, uh, I'm trying to think of a small store. Not many. Like that's a little, I guess it would be like a local. We're not working with bodegas. You know, we're working with like big box stores, like multi-billion-dollar businesses. A uh, home and what's one oh nine five oh oh? What is that, my friend? You gotta elaborate. Garrett, what's up, bro? I'm well. How about yourself, man? What's going on? Everything good? Um, Caleb, yeah, we actually, that's how we started our business, was with Costco Wholesale and BJ's. The clubs, the wholesale clubs, that's how we started the business. Gabe, hello. Karen R., what's up? Thanks, Holman, man. That means a lot coming from you, man. I respect your hustle, man. I appreciate you. I see your, I see your beautiful little family on Instagram jumping in the pool and you and your lovely wife. I see you guys hanging out. Like, that makes me so happy, you know, especially because we got to meet in person and spend those couple hours together. I feel like, you know, like I know you better now. And that's really the name of the game here. And that's why I do these lives. And that's, I enjoy it. You know, I'm at my house. I could be doing anything right now. Like, literally anything in the world. I could be doing right now. I could be traveling the world. I could be working. I could be laying on the couch watching Netflix. I could be doing whatever the fuck I want. But I choose to spend this time with you because I, I like to. And I appreciate all of you. And I like helping you, to be honest. So, Holman, that means a lot, man. I think, I think most people do appreciate the time. Holman, thank you. Uh, Gustav... Ziegler said, what do you think of drop shipping? Oh, we're getting up there now. We got 50 people in here. Let's get this up here, my friends. I wish you could, like, tag people in here. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll just keep talking this shit. Maybe we'll get 100 people in here. Um, one of my distributors doesn't have ex... Or no, I skipped the one. G Gustav Ziegler said, how do you... Th what do you think about drop shipping? So... Listen, I know a lot of people who do, you know, million plus dollars a year in drop shipping. Um, I've also know a few people who were doing a million plus a year in drop shipping and then they got their account suspended like indefinitely. Um, I also know some smaller sellers who do drop shipping. It's 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 a very savvy. It's it's very like uh, I want to say like just like like savvy fucking type of person takes to do you know you're shopping for these deals buying it from here selling it you know getting it shipped to your house or or uh shipping it directly from the from the place and then you're getting returns to your house that's what i mean not shipped to your house but then you're getting returns to your house from amazon like it's just crazy um 
But I don't know. If you're going to do it within Amazon's terms of service and you're not going to be shipping it, you know, so what Amazon's terms of service says is technically you can't do, you know, you're not supposed to drop shit from Walmart because it shows up in a Walmart box. So that's like against limits. Target, not supposed to drop shit from Target because it shows up in a Target box. Um, so you should be drop shipping from like wholesalers who allow drop shipping and ship it in a brown box. Manny Kalan said, one of my distributors doesn't have Excel sheet and they don't want to send out one because they don't want their competitors to know what exact products they're selling. How do you go about that? Uh, well, how do you know what products they have? Do they have a website? Um, sometimes, so this is the thing, right? With companies like that, it's worth it to spend. Sometimes it takes a day or two. What did we just get? Oh, I thought it was a notification. But yeah, listen, at the end of the day here, what was I talking about? I just got distracted. I was looking at all these. Look at this list. Like, look at all these people. This is These are people who are, who are trying to change their lives, right? These are people who are trying to change their lives. These are all members of eSellers RI. Like, these are all people who are trying to change their lives. Like, that is exciting, if you ask me. You know, that is a giant list of people who are willing to take action to improve their life. That is amazing. So one of my distributors doesn't have Excel sheets. So what you should do is you should spend time wherever they have their products researching their, um, researching the products on their website and spend the time doing title searches based on those products because usually companies like that, they have the same products consistently. So once you place, once you spend that two days placing that first order, everything after that, most of it, 90% of the work will be reorders. So you no longer have to do that extensive research on their website. You just know, you know, SKU A is selling really well. The tape dispenser is selling really well. You want to buy more of them, send them an email. You buy 500 more, 600 more, whatever it is. Thanks, Leo. Leo said my penguin polo is fire or straight flex. What did you eat for dinner? I went to Quick Check and I got a quesadilla, a little buffalo chicken quesadilla. So fun little fact about me. I just don't cook. A, I don't have time. B, I usually don't get home till 9, 10 o'clock at night. The last thing I want to fucking do when I get home is make a fucking, you know, stir fry or a lasagna or some shit. Like, that's the last thing I want to do. Um, so, usually I, like, go food shopping twice a week. Um, I'll bring lunch to work so I don't have to leave. And also, buying lunch every day is ridiculously expensive if you do it 365 days a year or whatever the work year is, 220 days. Um, so I prefer not to do that. But yeah, I don't, I haven't used my stove and I made a pizza like two weeks ago. But other than that, I just don't cook. I don't have time for that shit. Taking notes, Christian, awesome. Yeah, and listen, if anybody's getting value out of this, like this is a, what, what am I going on? Let me make sure my battery's not going to die. I'm at 25%. If anybody's getting value out of this, like this is just me hanging out with y'all. This is like casual conversation. Imagine the content that's in these sellers are I. Just imagine that shit. It's fucking crazy if you ask me. Waiting for my steak to rest. Nice. Garrett's picking his nose. Cody's stuck at the fire station. That's cool, man. I got a lot of respect for you, man. Like running into burning buildings, like that's fucking crazy. That's crazy, man. Shout out to Cody for being a fireman. T Black is scrambling eggs. Nice. You throw anything in there? You got any like diced tomatoes or something? Or you're just like, listen, I know me. Listen, I'm not saying you gotta do that, but I know me. If I'm cooking eggs, I ain't throwing shit in there. I was just talking about I never cook, but once in a while I make a little breakfast. It's like eggs, Taylor ham bagel that's it product research watching your live e-sellers ri nice leo leo's watching e-sellers ri right now as we speak that's fucking exciting anyone's else's inventory taking forever to check in ours has been taking a little bit longer yes not forever but a little bit longer uh no i'm not 48 do you use an account health consultant or do you do that on your own in-house? We do it all in-house. Uh, we have a personal assistant. Her name's Shanice. She's a gem. 
uh, she takes care of a lot of the account health issues. Cody, that's a great question. Cody, man, hit me with that heat tonight. So Cody Suarez just said, do you work with any vendors that have up to four week lead times? The margins are crazy and they claim to purchase from the brand. Is it worth it? We do. We do work with suppliers that have four week lead times, but when we're purchasing that inventory, you want to do an in-depth check of that Keepa chart. You want to be going back a year, maybe even looking back at the lifespan of that listing, two years, three years. You want to be looking at that and seeing if there's any crazy outliers in price there. You definitely want to be doing that. You also want to be checking the reviews, making sure the competition doesn't have a lot of units. But absolutely, I'll wait four weeks for a product if I'm making eight, nine bucks on it and everything checks out. Austin Mueller said, waiting for LLC to be filed, so I don't have EAN yet. Is it still possible to buy from suppliers one till I get it? Without suppliers without one till I get it. It's, listen, you can reach out. Some of them aren't going to ask for it, but if they do ask for it and you don't have it, if you're going to get it in a couple days, start reaching out. And if they ask for it, just hold off on the email. Flag the email, you know, mark is unread, and then send it in a couple days when you get it. Really, the LLC process is pretty quick. You should have it any day. Uh, Andres. Um, yes, we have broke even on a product. We've broken even on a lot of products. We've lost a lot of money on a lot of products as well. But not intentionally. You know, we never buy inventory to break even on it. But what we will do is sometimes the supplier will call us and say, you know, let's say we're placing a... Because it's like a take-give, take-give, and then gain relationship. You know, like one hand wash the other, both wash the face relationship. So, like, some of the suppliers we place, you know couple hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory a month with or you as a smaller seller may place let's say ten thousand dollars in a month with um like they're doing you a favor right they might be giving you good discounts so if they call you one day and they say hey andres you know i have you know 200 units of this product and you look it up and you're you know making a quarter on it or you're breaking even but like consistently breaking even you know based on keep a chart say yes say yes to the supplier take that product because that's, they're going to remember that shit. And the next time you need a dollar off that product to fucking crush it, they're going to give it to you because people remember that. Um, TJB said, what do you feel the most efficient way to create an FBA shipment is? Um, I think the most efficient way is through the back end using API calls through MWS. Uh, but second to that is directly through Seller Central. I think that is the most effective way to create a, a shipment. Um, now, I've never used Inventory Lab, so I can't speak on that. I know a lot of people use that, but I can't speak on it because I've never used it. What ranks products? What ranks products? Is it PPC, clicks, or sales? Thank you so much. You are so helpful. Mel, Melanie. Melinda Win Winsu. I pronounced it right before I think but I'm butchering it now. I apologize. Malin. Um sales. Sales ranks products. Sales. Because people could be clicking on your product. Let's say you're running a shit ton of PPC, right? We're gonna we're gonna talk about the first two. Let's say you're running a shit ton of PPC. People are clicking on it but they're not buying it. The rank will not go down until they start buying it. Thank you so much. You are so helpful. No problem. Armadillo1 said, How much money do you take from the profit and reinvest? Um, so we pay ourselves salaries. So we get weekly paychecks and everything else goes back into the company. And then at the end of the year, depending on how the business performed that year, we take a bonus. Um, but literally, whatever our salary is, Everything else goes back into the business. Joshua was loving the course. Listen, if anybody's in the course right now and they want to hop in this live, I'd love to hear what you think about it. You know, I, I talk to a lot of you on Instagram. I'd really love to hear what you have to say about it. Like, honest opinion, right? If you think it needs this, I want to hear that shit. 
If you think it's phenomenal, I want to hear that shit. Like, I want to know. Don't be shy. Like, this is how people grow. Constructive criticism, right? Like, hey, E, the course is great. I really think it could use this. Like, wow, that's a great idea. You know, we have that in the next module. Or, wow, that's a great idea. We'll take care of it. You know, constructive criticism. That's what life's about. Hey, man, this is R. Hernandez. I almost said Hernandez. R. Hernandez. R. Hernandez said, hey, man, my IPI is at 475, and we need, yeah. Let me see. What am I doing? Why is it so complicated? Inventory planning. All right. So this is what you need to do. Amazon tells you what you need to do with your IPI score. So you literally excess inventory, right? It tells you, like right now we have 34 units of excess inventory. That we need to drop price. If you even need to lose money on this excess inventory, lose that shit. Drop the price, sell it out, run ads, move that shit. FBA sell-through rate. What do you got to do? You got to improve the sell-through rate. What's that mean? Drop price. It means you got to drop price to so improve your IPI score. Stranded inventory percentage. What do you got to do? You got to address these 70 listings. You got to click here and address those 70 listings. Pull some back to your warehouse. Um, fix the ones that are errors and need and help. And then FBA in stock rate, um, which I think that is the most bullshit fucking metric that Amazon has because A, they have no idea what I paid for the product. So how are they going to tell me I should restock it? They don't even know what I bought it for. What if last week I got it for $4, this week is $6 and I was only making two bucks on it. And they're like, buy more, sell more of it, make our customers happy, don't make any money. Um, so I think the restock today, FBA in stock rate is a fucking joke, but you got to deal with it. So... But I'm not going to buy products just to get my FBA and stock rate high. AMZ seller forever. What's up, my friend? How are you? How you feeling, man? I remember two weeks ago we talked and you were a little under the weather. I know you had, I think you said a surgery, correct? So I hope you're doing well, man. I'm keeping you in my prayers. How much do you need in order to start Amazon? Many different people have different numbers, but from what I've seen, it ranges between two and 50K. Wow, that's a huge, that's a, that's a wide gap there. I'll tell you right now, used books, $20, plus the $39.99 a month, plus maybe some shipping expenses, 100 bucks. You can start selling used books tomorrow, used books. Retail arbitrage, a couple hundred dollars. Cover the $39.99 a month. You can go spend $200 at a local store, start buying some products, spend another 30, 40 bucks on shipping it to Amazon. Bickety bam, $350 retail arbitrage. Wholesale, I would say minimum after you bought eSellers RI, I would say minimum to have it to invest three to $5,000. This will allow you to open up accounts with wholesalers, start placing minimum order quantities from those wholesalers. Private label, say 1,000 to 5,000. Really depends on how expensive the product you're getting is. You know, if you're purchasing a $20 product, that's only 50 units if it's $1,000. So you might need closer to, you know, 5,000 for a $20 product. But if your product is 75 cents, then a thousand of them is going to get you a thousand dollars is going to get you it's going to get you what like 300 of them i don't even know what the math is on. no more than that it's going to get you like 1250 of them so it depends on how much your product is but those are the answers joshua and whoever's telling you anything else don't listen to them simon bro yeah what's up my friend i'm live again bro you know me the course is not oh man this is great so this is what andres just said he said the course is not comparable to anything he has ever seen or you will ever see. That is nuts. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it because, listen, this is what we do for a living. Like we're professionals. Yeah, Garrett. Perks of that's a great question. You guys are really hitting me with the heat tonight. I'm gonna wrap this up in about ten minutes. 
Only because, honestly, I work like a fucking madman, and I, I need, like, just, like, probably an hour just to wind down, you know? Not that I have to tell you that I'm going to leave, you know? It's like... <laughs> but I'm just, just speaking out my, what my mind is saying, you know? I've been fucking working like a madman. I could so just use an hour to chill the fuck out. It would be good for my health, you know, and my mental state. Um... But perks of sending products to your warehouse for straight to Amazon. Uh, QC, quality control. Definitely a huge perk. A huge, and one of the main perks is quality control. That's why we have everything shipped to us first. I don't want some pick and pack center fucking up my FBA shipment, and then I get charged all this money because they fucked it up. You know, I don't want Amazon mislabeling one of my products and then I gotta deal with the shit or create a case to have them fix the problem. I want to be in control of my inventory. I want to know how it's packaged. I want to package it correctly. I want to make sure it's sent out in the right pack size. Two packs supposed to be a two pack. It's not supposed to be a three pack. It's not supposed to be a one pack. It's supposed to be a two pack. So that's the main reason. And then also you can get your cost to prep those products lower. Right? Like a warehouse is, I don't want to say a fixed expense. Um, this is not really fixed, especially if you're continuing to grow. But like, based on how you can produce, how much inventory you can produce, like you can get it lower than a prep center. You can get your inventory cost lower than a prep center. Gustavo, I don't know. I don't listen. I know a lot of people who make a lot of money drop shipping, but we don't. I don't do any drop shipping. We've. I don't think we've ever done any drop shipping. Listen, if anybody's just joining. I respect the shit out of y'all spending this time with me. I really do. I really do. Like, I appreciate all of you, you know? I don't know most of you. I know you, like, through social media, you know? A lot of you I've met in person, actually. And, and, and once COVID clears up, we're going to be, Sebastian and me, we're going to be hitting Miami first and then doing a Vegas trip and an L.A. trip and a Chicago trip. And then we're probably going to hit Central Central America. Well, not, like, like, like Central like the United States, so like Midwest, that's what I should have said, not like Central America, but maybe we'll hit Central America too. Um, we're gonna hit the Midwest, do like Nashville. We'll be in Nashville in February if everything clears up. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you, you know, for spending time to grow your business, you know? This is why we're doing this. This is why there's 40 people listening to me talk right now because they want, they want more for themselves. You want more for yourself. And I can respect the fuck out of that. Where did I leave off here? So yeah, no on dropshipping. A lot of people make good money on it though, but I just don't. We don't get down on it. Does your product prices ever tank? And if so, how do you deal with it? Um, a lot of times we'll just move the inventory out. We'll take a look at the keep a chart and see if it will go back up. And if it's not going back up, usually after 30 to 45 days, we make a decision. The cash flow is king when you're selling on Amazon. Oh, someone wants to join. Who's joining? Azam Wise Guy. Let's bring Azam Wise Guy. Let's see what Homeboy's got to say. What's going on? Is he joining? He denied me? Oh, man. It's blasphemous. Yeah, our product price is tank. We analyze Keeper, make a decision to, to drop price and liquidate or, or wait, hold it out. How much do you need to start selling on Amazon? Because it ranges from 2 to 5K. I answered that. Best way to approach a brand about an exclusivity deal. Provide them value. Research their listings and provide them value. Figure out what their pain points are. If they have great listings, what the bullet points need improving, let them know that shit. Create something to let them know. How do I get a wholesale account from your company? Is it possible? Yeah, email me uh, or go to go to avidwholesalegroup.com. What's the best way to increase? I'll just answer that. Did I did I answer these already? Did you guys ever run into a problem with Amazon not gaining you, even though you submitted an invoice from your supplier, large supplier? Also, yes, it has happened. You guys are amazing. Thank you, J. Cam. Peanut butter lit. <laughs> peanut butter lit. You guys sell all the pallets to peanut, all them pallets to peanut butter. Yeah, we sold them. That was a one day sale for us. Same with the with the fifty five pallets of tuna fish we got on Monday that Sebastian recorded. Or that was 
Is that Monday? No, it's Tuesday. Same with the 55 pallets of tuna fish. That was a one-day flip. Those were wholesale flips. So one day, you know, yeah, making a quarter on every on every can of peanut butter, you know, but we sold 122,000 of them in a day. You know, so it's like, sign me the fuck up. That's $30,000 in profit. Even if I'm making five cents on it, that's still, what, $8,000 in profit a day. What's good, little bro? Shaq, bro, what's up? Shaq, you should join this live with me. So if anybody doesn't know Shaq, most people will know Shaq. I grew up with Shaq. Shaq is my childhood neighbor. Why can't I see the people are in here anymore? Oh, there we go. So Shaq, I've been fucking, I've been kicking the shit with Shaq since I was like two years old on Pine Street. Me and Shaq go way back, bro. Mad respect for Shaq. What percent of restock orders do you have? Maybe 50, 50%. Andre's hitting us with these facts. Let's see what Andre's is saying about the facts of Amazon. 60% of the top Amazon sellers are Chinese companies, not just manufactured in China. They are Chinese. This is correct, Eric? Um, it could be. I know 1% of the top Amazon sellers is sitting right in front of you because we are top, not only a top 100 Amazon seller, but we're top 30 Amazon seller. Um, so I try not to focus on the, like, even if the Chinese are crushing it. What's that seller's name? I can't think of them. Oh, Pharma Packs. I know um, Avalanche Brands. I know Zappos. I know Worldwide Books. Like, these are all top 100 sellers. They're not Chinese companies. Um, AMZ Seller Forever said he's doing some work at his house or to an apartment rented now. Nice. Yes, we're doing wholesale. Value bombs. Do you have a don't ask, don't tell policy in terms of disclosing to suppliers about selling on Amazon? No, we have a tell, tell, uh, a tell, tell, ask, ask, tell policy. So like if they ask, we tell them. If they don't ask, we tell them. Um, now, obviously not in the first conversation. There's a time and a place to bring it up. But the last thing you want to do is not tell a supplier you sell on Amazon. You start crushing it with their products. Then all of a sudden they tell you, sorry, sorry, John, we can't sell to you anymore. You know, you you didn't tell us you sold on Amazon. And we asked you or you, we asked you and you didn't tell us or we asked you and you lied to us. And horrible for business. And there's some people who out there who will tell you to do that. I think they're fucking idiots. Maybe that was harsh idiots, but it's like, it's come on. Like, come on. You know? And then I'm not saying, come on, Sean. He. I'm just saying, like, 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 let's, like, let's think about it like this, right? If you're going to take a girl out to dinner or a guy out to dinner or a they out to dinner, whatever, it's 2020. If you're going to take someone out to dinner, right? And you're going to lie the entire dinner. Like, yeah, you might get in the bed with them. You might sleep with them that night. You're going to have some fun. But, like, is anything long-term going to grow out of that? Absolutely not. Because it's based on lies. It's based on false hopes and dreams. So just like, like, yeah, now, some people just want the one-night stand. Some people just want to hit it and quit it, right? And those people, they don't last in business long. You know, just like in relationships, those people, they're, the ones I know, they're usually not very happy people. So, like, you got the hit it and quit it method, or you got the grow a lifelong relationship method. I'm, I'm the lifelong, I'm the lifelong relationship kind of guy. That's where the deal's coming. I've been using Inventory Lab and feels pretty good, but thank you for the insight. I would recommend you save your live sessions like this one and post them on your YouTube channel. That's a good idea. But then I would need more people to join me on my YouTube channel. Listen, if I could get 40 people, if I could do this on YouTube right now and get all 44 of you on my live YouTube channel, I would do these on YouTube. But when I go on YouTube, it's like eight, nine people. But then again, maybe you brought up a great idea. Now that's where they're going. Next one is on YouTube. I'm going to do it right here. 
I got my webcam right here. I'm going to set it up right here, and I'm going to do my next one on YouTube because the only way to do that to get people there is to do it consistently. You just blew my mind, AMZ. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm making a note right here. Making a fucking note. YouTube. My first one's going to be this weekend. This, either Saturday or Sunday. I gotta go see my mom. But. Oh, you're saying save the live session and post it on YouTube. Yeah, I just don't like the tiny little screen. Would you guys watch this if it had a tiny little screen? Would you watch this on... On uh, on YouTube, because if you'd watch it on YouTube, with the if I download this and upload it to to YouTube, I would post this on YouTube. I just don't know if y'all would watch it. But if y'all watch it, throw me a thumbs up. I'll post it. Any tip on brand registry with brands? Might be working with one. Um, yeah. So you have two options with brand registry. You can be a registered agent of the brand, and they would create brand registry through their account, and then you would have access to their account and sell it under their account. Um, or you can, you can register the brand through your account and get them registered through brand registry. And what they would do is when you're, when you're enrolling for brand registry, um, they ask for your, your, they send an email, they ask for the lawyer who trademarked your products. So they ask for the email address for the lawyer who trademarked your products or their products and then they send that lawyer an email and that lawyer gets the email and it's a code and they give that code to you so you can register for them you just have to communicate with them that that's what's going to happen or they could register their own brand on brand registry so there's a lot of options with brand registry and i recommend if you're going to take a brand on and sell their products get them to pay for advertising No, I didn't. B Mosh, man, I'd love to share that type of information in here, but that's like too secretive. That's like for e sellers RI members only. But the new mob show on Netflix about my uncle Paulie Castellano, no, I haven't seen that yet. I'll check it out though. AMZ sellers said courses for good. You can't can't wait for the rest. You watched the whole thing already? You watched the whole thing? AMZ seller forever? I think it's like it's just the first, what did we give you, nine modules? I think it's like 20 hours worth of content, if not more. By the way, if anybody doesn't know, we, we have an Amazon course. It's called eSellers RI, and it's closing literally in a couple hours. Like, no more access. It's closing in a couple hours, and it will fucking change your life. Let me see if anybody signed up while I'm doing this. Yeah, we got two people. That's amazing. That's so exciting. Nice. Guy from Atlanta, Georgia just signed up at 1036. Look at it. People are signing up for this shit. I'm telling you. This is like game changer shit. Look at this. I don't wanna I don't wanna show any of his information. But like look at this. Congratulations. Dude just signed up, right? You just received a payment. At 10.36, it's 10.42. Dude just signed up six minutes ago. He's not fucking around. He's like, I want it. Emerald Avenue Shops had so much knowledge, big brain energy, feeling it. That big brain energy. I love it. I don't know. I wish I could click on this Docs Wordspace. Um, I'm doing good, bro. I actually can't wait for the rest of the course. Yes, I actually lost 100 pounds. Your thyroid's out of whack, man. Listen, thyroid's crazy. My mother has thyroid issues, man, so I can I feel your pain, man. She goes through some shit so I can imagine what you're going through, you know, but drastic weight loss, weight gain, sleeplessness. I, I feel you, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep you in my prayers, 100%, without a doubt, man. Let me actually see something. Oh, man, I'm about to get kicked off. It's been an hour already. All right, I'm about to come back on. I'm sorry. I lost all the rest of these questions. I'm about to come back on for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to go for the night. But I'm getting kicked off this live. So if you want to come back on, come join me. We'll hang out for 10 more minutes, and then I got to break out of here. But it's ending in um, three, 
three, two, one.